Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for um, coming here to the opening of A Future for Memory, Art and Life After the Great East Japan Earthquake. Um, it's um, my honor to welcome you here um, and to acknowledge that the museum is on the traditional ancestral and unceded land uh, of the Musqueam, other Musqueam people, and we're especially grateful and honored to have a very close relationship with that community. And um, it's my honor today to welcome uh, Deborah uh, Sparrow, who is going to say a few words um, at the be at, uh, to begin today's event. Thank you, Deborah. I'm going to slip my mask off because I can't talk through it. I mean, I could, but I think I'm far enough away from all of you. Uh, so I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our lands, our ancient lands, on behalf of my chief, Wayne Sparrow, who, yes, shares the same last name as me, but he's not my husband, because I'm still lucky. <laughs> But he is my younger brother, and I taught him everything he knows, that's why he's chief. <laughs> I may not have taught him everything, but certainly my grandfather did. And my grandfather lived to be 100. And so he sat many hours with my grandfather, not on the fishing grounds, sharing the histories of our great lands, the same histories their ancestors shared with them. And here we go back thousands of years, not just hundreds. And we welcomed the world here. And now we come together in this place we call Vancouver. And we share our differences and our sameness. The great Maya Angelou, who has since left us to be in the spirit world, once shared with me, we're as much alike as we are different. And so when we look at exhibits like this one, I haven't had the opportunity to walk through, but I certainly will. It reminds us of why we exist. It reminds us of where we are today and how careful we have to be when we walk on Mother Earth. And every once in a while, she shakes us up. And she reminds humanity of just how really frail we are without her. And that we mustn't take an advantage. And as we move through this world so very fast, we sometimes forget. And not only does Mother Earth remind us, but other situations happen like has been happening over this last year with the virus, to remind us again to stop. And stop and stay still and we have to look at ourselves. When we're alone in our apartments or our condos or our homes, we are made to stop and reevaluate who we are again as human beings in relations to the earth, and to the sky, to the water, and to each other, most importantly. We're in a very fragile time. And so we have to really stop and value who we are. And that was the words that my grandfather left with me when he left this world. He always said, know who you are and know where you come from. Because if you don't know that, then you feel like nothing. And I took those words very seriously because I sat with him all the time. He was my best friend. And so I wear this blanket to always remind me of what he said, to never forget who I am. I wear who I am. It's part of the fibers of life that each and every one of us, no matter which culture we come from, are woven into that fabric of life. Art and life after the greatest Japanese earthquake that shook all of us everywhere. And it sent us into prayer. And it sent us into humbleness. And if we could do anything, we could, we would. If we could have jumped on the planes or gone on a boat to help, we would have. And so, where do we go from here? How do we exist after it? I spent many hours also with my grandfather in Richmond, known as Steveton, and we lived in the little Japanese houses. And the Japanese were very close friends of ours. 
And so we understood their history, similar to ours. And that's why they love being there, because they love to fish. But if Mother Earth shakes us up, and the waters become where they're coming to today, we can no longer fish. And so when she shakes us up, she wants us to remember these things. She wants us not to just move forward always so fast that we forget where we've been. So we need to balance, balance both as we move through. And I think that is where we are today. That we're looking for an old philosophy with a new eye. That we need that foundation always in our lives so that we can rebuild in a way that works for the earth and the sky and the waters and the elements. Because we're so human that we just get very self-centered and forget that we want the best of everything. But you can have the best of everything. And then she shakes us up again. And we're back to nothing. And so those are the messages she sends to us. Not only there, but throughout the world. And I would like to say, I hope when you walk through here, you enjoy the exhibit. But I don't know if that's the word. Because it will go deep within us. And it will speak many messages. And we'll go away from here, I hope, thinking very seriously about where we're going to go. And so here, the museum is at its place to do the thing as well, to make this earthquake proof. What a job it is. And I don't know, you know how earthquake proof we could ever really be, because I'm sure and I understand that the ring of fire that exists throughout the Pacific. You know, all of us have stories. Every culture along that ring of fire has a story. And yet we still live there. And we still make our homes there. And so that's the question, why would we? But I hope, and there's always hope, that we can find answers within ourselves and within our communities about how we balance this. Some of the debris from that traveled over here to our west coast, and some of our relatives on the west coast found the remains of some of the boats and the things that moved in the ocean. And within this, again, we see and we hear the messages that we share in this ring of fire. So it's not just about one, when it affects one, it affects all of us. And so with that, I'd like to just welcome each and every one of you for being here and to walk through the exhibit and keep mindful and hope that the things that are going on in the world today will come to uh, a good place in the next coming few months and maybe a year that we can all see each other again and visit. So hi Chelsea, I'm teaching and one of you thank you. Hi Chelsea. Thank you so much Deborah for sharing those thoughts with us and your profound knowledge and appreciation and sensibility towards the Towards the world. Thank you. It's always such a pleasure to, 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 to hear the words that you share. I think it's important to do events like this. Um, you know, we're far from the uh, 2,000 people that we are um, sometimes attracted to our openings, but I think it's still very important to actually have these events to symbolize um, the opening, another phase in the museum's history, a new phase in the museum's relationships with different peoples to honour the artists, to honour all the people who work on these exhibitions and the curators, and um, to make a statement that, um, you know, that this institution is here, it continues to be vital, it continues to be strong, we continue to work with people from across the world. So thank you for being here, 
it's um, an important, an important event. Um, a future for memory, art and life after the Great East uh, Japan earthquake, is held on the 10th anniversary year of the Great East Japan earthquake. On March the 11th, 2011, Japan was rocked by a 10 magnitude earthquake that caused extensive damage to the Great Eastern region, especially the northeastern region, known as Tahoku. The huge tsunami wave triggered by this earthquake swallowed up several towns along the coast, taking away the lives of numerous people. The tsunami also disabled the power supply and cooling system of three reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. This triple disaster, the earthquake off the Pacific coast of Tohoku and the tsunami combined with the nuclear disaster is commonly referred to as a Great East Japan earthquake, or 311, not Fukushima, which designates just one of many prefectures affected by the event. Events like this and the um, conditions under which we're currently living remind us, um, as Deborah so eloquently um, uh, uh, said, remind us to really think about our lives and um, our relationships to nature um, and have the potential to resensitize ourselves to the world, to the world around us. The exhibition shows that the disaster is not simply about a region, in this case Tohoku, or a country, Japan, but of global relevance. Um, we should remember there are 19 nuclear reactors in operation in Canada, the second largest producer and exporter of uranium in the world. Fishing boats from Tohoku um, also were swept up onto the shores of the Pacific Northwest, reminding us again that we are connected by the same ocean and are mutually responsible for our environment. The exhibition is an important occasion for those of us living in Canada to consider the impact of natural disasters and their implications as we prepare for potential future disasters that may occur here. Because Canada has not suffered a major earthquake or tsunami of this scale in living memory, we often see such disasters as someone else's problem, not our own. But coast of British Columbia is a region most at risk from potentially major earthquakes and tsunamis. A future for memory not only complements MOA's engage, uh, ongoing engagement with preserving cultural heritage, but provides opportunities for further discussion, particularly at this time, given that we ourselves are preparing to um, do uh, considerable earthquake mitigation uh, on the Great Hall, which is currently closed, awaiting that work to begin. There are many people um, we have to thank for, for this exhibition. In particular, I would like to mention the Japan Foundation for their continuous support for our project. Um, Mrs. Yuko Shimizu, Executive Director of the Japan Foundation's Toronto office, is unfortunately unable to join us today because of the COVID-19 travel restrictions. But she has sent us a recorded video message in it, she notes, and I quote, that there has never been a more relevant time to appreciate this exhibition than now in relationship to the pandemic which we are experiencing all over the world. The earthquake, she says, and the nuclear accident resulted in major partings and separations. Now we are all suffering from the distancing which results from quarantine precautions and travel restrictions. We are all more or less in isolation and experiencing loneliness, uh, human conditions in common with those of 10 years ago in the Tahuku area of Japan. To me, she goes on to say, a future for memory offers some kind of healing and positive guidance for our future. The exhibition seems to demonstrate how people can cope with their difficult times, sometimes amazingly treating their own pain is almost beautiful. Fundamentally, these works seem to embrace an attempt to be reunited and reconnected. 
the full version of their message, um, will be added to um, our, our, our website at a later date. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Minasama konnichiwa. My name is Yuko Shimizu, and I am the Executive Director of the Japan Foundation Toronto. It is my honor to participate in this event to celebrate the opening of A Future for Memory, Art and Life After the Great East Japan Earthquake, this new exhibition at the Museum of Anthropology at the Uni University of British Columbia. This exhibition's curator, Dr. Fuyubi Nakamura, is a long-term collaborator with the Japan Foundation. Beginning with a calligraphy exhibition in Australia in 2010, and followed by another exhibition in Argentina in 2011, the Japan Foundation was pleased to offer our grants to both shows. As well, I have a fond memory of being with you in Vancouver at the opening of Trace of Words, Art and Calligraphy from Asia in 2017. Right after the Trace of Words exhibition, the Japan Foundation began to work on the grant program with Dr. Nakamura for this new exhibition about the 311 earthquake. Several postponements followed, and I deeply appreciate Dr. Nakamura's patience and endurance to work through the entire process to realize our participation. The delay due to seismic upgrades has brought us to the point where the exhibition period of a future for memory now covers the 10th anniversary of the Great East Japan earthquake. A Future for Memory is organized from the viewpoint stating that regional disasters have global relevance. And I find another positive effect of the postponement here. We have never had a more relevant time to appreciate this ex exhibition than now in relation to the pandemic, which we are experiencing all over the world. The earthquake and the nuclear accidents resulted in many partings and separations. Certainly, death takes good souls away from us. The physical destruction of cities and homes also caused separations. Now we are suffering from the distancing which results from quarantines, precautions, and travel restrictions. We are all more or less in isolation and experiencing loneliness, human conditions in common with those of 10 years ago in the Tohoku area of Japan. To me, a future for memory offers some kind of healing and positive guidance for our future. The exhibition seems to demonstrate how people can cope with their difficult times, sometimes amazingly treating their own pain as beautiful. Fundamentally, these works seem to embrace and attempt to be reunited and reconnected. In closing, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the Museum of Anthropology at the University of British Columbia for producing and hosting such a beautiful, encouraging exhibition and for inviting me to revisit you all on your opening today. Please be safe and stay connected. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita. I'd also like to thank the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council for their generous support and also to UBC Center for Japanese Research for the, for the academic programs um, that they have devised with the museum to accompany the exhibition. It's now my pleasure to welcome and introduce Consul, the Consul General of Japan uh, in Vancouver, Mr. Takeshi Atoro, uh, who will now join us and um, say a few words. Uh, thank you for the kind invitation to attend uh, this opening celebration. It is a pleasure for me to be here. In a few short weeks on March 11th, we will mark the 10th anniversary of the tragic late Earth, uh, East Japan earthquake. The full scope of the disaster will in major way and its impact is still felt today. In the days uh, immediately following the disaster, our office, 
uh, uh, Japanese consulate, uh, became a focal point for many British Colombians uh, expressing their uh, condolences. We received an outpouring of sympathy and support that truly touched our hearts. Many uh, wanted to uh, donate uh, to those in need to, or contribute to the uh, recovery efforts, many volunteers to help. Benefit concerts were held across the province, donations poured in, and we were deeply uh, moved by the warmth and generosity of the people here. We truly felt a bound of friendship between Canada and Japan. Since the uh, tragedy, uh, even now, some 10 years later, the effects of the disaster are still evident in the landscape and felt in the hearts of many. Among the ways we deal uh, with such tragedies is through reflection and through creative self-expression such as that on display there, here. This exhibition uh, is an opportunity to remind, uh, remember, pay tribute, reflect and consider our relationship with the uh, natural environment. It is also an invitation to a deeper understanding of such natural disasters and for us to so free evaluate their effects and our responses. I want to thank the uh, Museum of Anthropology for their dedication to proceed with uh, this exhibition at, at a difficult time. I hope that many British Colombians uh, can view this exhibit uh, as I am sure it will contribute to greater understanding between our uh, countries and uh, uh, reinforce the mutual friendly uh, relations we share as neighbors across the Pacific. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now I want to um, introduce Dr. Fubi Nakamura, um, the curator of, the, uh, of, of, of this exhibition. Um, she's been discussing this exhibition, we've been talking about it for what, three, four years, and, um, and um, really figuring out what the relationship could be between art and documentary, and how important it was to get it just right. And um, I think she's done an excellent job in doing that. Um, this is uh, for you, the third major exhibition at the museum, and I think to all of them she brings a very special sensibility, um, a particular aesthetic and, um, and lens uh, to bear on Asia. So, Fiubi, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Speech that was so touching, and thank you for kind and um, so general. Uh, many thanks to all of you who are joining us today. It's very good to see you here. Okay, first of all, I'd like to dedicate this exhibition and accompanying publication to all the people I have met in Tohoku since 2011. Both projects are the result of commitment, generosity of many people. My utmost thanks are especially due to the participating artists and collaborators in this exhibition. So I'd like to actually thank them in Japanese. Kono ten nan kai to awase to shippan suru shoseki o 2011 nen iko tohoku ni deatta katagata ni sasarimasu. Ten nan kai mo shippan mo kazu ooku no shitatachi ni yoru ko sando, go jinryok na shite wa nashie na katta koto desu. Toku ni ten nan kai shitten sha ni taishite kokoro yori ore o mo shitarimasu. まず、リアスアート美術館山内博康さん、ロスアンドファンドプロジェクト高橋宗正さん、牛田根田町模型復元プロジェクト月橋修さん、磯村和樹さん、工場崎さん、先輩メディアテイク3月11日を忘れないために
、甲斐健二さん、水谷ひとみさん、津波レディス制作委員会、そして作家の岡野正夫さん、湊千尋さん、片桐康信さん、また展覧会を遂行する上で特にご協力をいただいた南相馬博物館、二上文彦さん、福島県立博物館、川野辺康直さん、小林めぐみさん、塚本舞子さん、札幌の CAI 現代芸術研究所、研究所佐野由美子さんに感謝いたします。他にも数多くの方々にご協力をいただきました。I would also like to thank all the more staff and volunteers, especially the wonderful, fantastic exhibition team members, Skuka カ・ブルン、コーディ・ボコ、ケイト・マーカー、ケイダ・レイディ、ハイディス・ファインダー、ジェリー・ローソン、モヤ・ウォーターズ、アナ・パプラディス、ジュベル、マリ・ミスラ、ポニスさん、シャロン・カスラ、アナ・カラ・パイク、フォー・ゼン、デディケーション、アナ・クリエイティビティ、ダン・メイト・ディス・エクスピッション、ワー・イエイズ。ディス・コラバティブ・エクスピッション、デライス・フォン・マイ・パーソナル・エクスプレイス、イン・ダースター・リージョン、マイ・イニシャル・エンボーメント、ワー・リリーフ・ア・ダブリ・アクティビティス、アザ・ボランティア、イン・ツー・サザン・グレイン、In three different locations in Miami Prefecture. I was based in a place called a Fishing Village called Utatsu in Minami Sanuktan for the longest time. Since then, I have kept going back to the region every year as an anthropologist, except, except last year because of the pandemic. This exhibition addresses how we deal with memory when our physical surroundings are drastically altered. If focusing on the changing physical and psychological landscapes in the aftermath of three eleven, nature is powerful. It can be disrupted, but can also be regenerated and healing. While tsunami took away so many lives, ocean has also given us so much. There was a place of life in the aftermath of disaster. Flower, flowers bloomed and trees continued to grow. The moon and the stars shone about the lavish land. At the same time, in some area, the soil and trees exposed to radiation have had to be removed or cut down. These further changes to the natural landscape have added to the destructive impact of human needs or greed. I found that humans have a desire to create and express themselves. Even amid disasters, and so does nature. Recovery from a disaster is a long process. Art can be a crucial component in revitalizing disaster affected communities, as it can provide opportunity for reflection and create a shared sense of hope. Museums and archives can also play a vital role in documenting experience and preserving memories and histories. Through artworks and recovery projects, this exhibition explores the connections and relationships that have been developed because of this tragic disaster. It demonstrates how people have undertaken the process of recovery and preserving histories for our common future. The works in the exhibition trigger memories, emotions, and imagination. They serve more than just objects of memory. By reminding us to not forget the disaster or continuous effort of many survivors to live their lives. There is a future for memory through the creation of connection that will be passed on for generations to come. There will be a bilingual publication to accompany the exhibition, which will be available next month. And we are also offering a virtual tour of the exhibition, which we plan to premiere at the event to commemorate. And the 10th anniversary on March 11th. Also, it is a poignant exhibition because of the nature of the topic. There is a sense of hope and the resilience which I hope you will take away from this exhibition. Thank you. Um, thank you for your being again. Thank you for all for being here. And, uh, Please, uh, please enjoy the exhibition. Thank you so much.